In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at two ways in which you can build masks using objects. Now, some of you may wonder, what is a mask? A mask is something I think of when I think of the Lone Ranger. And the mask that he wears it would be of no use to him unless it had two holes in it through which he could see the world. A mask is basically a grid that you put on top of an object of any kind in your project and then you punch holes in it so you can see what's underneath. Uh, let's, let's show you a little bit more about that. We're going to take uh, this picture, this clip actually, of a waterfall and highlight it on track number one. And with it highlighted, I'll click in the button above my tracks called Designer and I choose the second option which is Mask Designer. That gets me into my Mask Designer screen. I have a preview window at the top. I have some keyframe information below that. We're going to shrink the keyframe area so we can see better. And then I have a library of masks on the left. So I have all these presets I can use so I don't have to build a mask of my own. Let's click on any one of these and you can see it pops up on the screen. Now the only thing I can do is I can resize it. I have the handles on the corners and on the sides. Now below it there's an object settings. One important thing to remember there is there's one called maintain aspect ratio. We'll get into some of the details later but maintain aspect ratio means now if I have that checked uh, it will still be a square. The proportions won't change. If I turn that off now, I can change the size of this hole. I can drag it and make it a rectangle of one kind or another uh, any way I want to. So I have lots of flexibility if this box happens to be unchecked. Again, if we check it, it will lock it back into the ratio of however I used it last and uh, there's no option for me to adjust it. If I want to go back and pick a different uh, preset, all I have to do is click on it and uh, the same rules apply. I can go down with, into the object settings and make some other changes. We'll show you about how to do that in another lesson. In this lesson we're going to focus on building your own mask out of an object. So we're going to click on the blue X in the library section. That will automatically clear any mask that you have applied. One limitation of PowerDirector that I don't like is it will only let you use one mask at a time, whether it's a pre-built mask or one you design. Uh, I saw something on the internet where someone claimed you could use multiple masks. I haven't figured out how to do it. Uh, so if, if you get the trick, let me know, but I don't believe it's possible. Now there are two ways to create your own mask. One is load image, the other is create mask. I'd like to show you the difference between these two in this particular lesson. I hardly ever use load image, but let me show you what it does. When I click on the load image button, it takes me to my file system. And then I have the, the icons, the images I can use. I've got one here called 100 by 128 white. That's simply a white bar and when I use that it gives me two options. I can use alpha channel to create the mask. I'll do that. The other is convert the image to grayscale and build a mask on grayscale. But you notice most of the preset images are pure white and that's what I like to use because it creates a nice clean mask. I'll click on OK. And immediately it adds my little bar, uh, my 1280 by 100 bar to the screen. And it creates a brand new mask I can use in this project or future projects. Again, I have the option of moving it around. And if I, um, if I don't have the maintain aspect ratio, which, well, let's click that on. Now the only thing I can do is resize it and it'll keep the proportions or again I can turn it off and I can make it uh, any kind of, of square or rectangle I prefer when I'm uh, going to build my mask. So that's what I have over here for example. Uh, I, could, I can't add another object when I'm building a mask using this process. That's one reason I don't normally use it. 
Now if I want to go ahead and remove the mask, I can right click on it and that's my only option. I can take it away and you, we can say yes. But notice it's still applied even though it's missing into my project. So what I have to do is go back up and click on the blue X and go back to default. So that's the load image. Let's look at the other one which is called Create Mask. The Create Mask is the one I prefer. That gives me my Mask Composer. And PowerDirector immediately says, oh, you want to create a mask with words. So it starts that way. And I don't want to, so all I have to do is press a Delete key. And it takes that away. But the other option I have above my preview screen here is this little uh, icon that says Insert Image. And there I can go back. I can insert the same image. And then I can change the proportions here. I can go back up to my margins if I like. Uh, and you say, well, what's the difference between these two things? Well, is I can also take this and I can insert it again. I can have multiple objects here that I can use. We can drag another one in. We can make it look as though we are looking, as it were, through blinds looking at this object. I can also take uh, another icon. I have a toucan and you notice this is white. And I can take the bird and put it over here. Now I have a hole, another hole punched in my grid. Let me show you what happens when you use a black object. I'll do insert new image. We'll take the black bird and notice again white reveals, black conceals. When we do this it's not really what I want in most cases, so that's why I, I invert it so that the colors and the images are normally white. I could actually even add text here if I want to. We'll call this bird, and I'll resize it, make it smaller, drag it up here. Oop. I'll spell it right. There we go. And now I have a complex mask for my image. Now the one thing I don't like about th this is that it treats everything here as an entire graphic, a composite graphic. When I click here, here's my little bird uh, mask. Uh, now I can right click on it. Now I can go to modify it, which I couldn't do before using the other technique. And I can go ahead and say, well, I don't want this part here. I'll delete it. Um, I don't want this part here. I'll delete that. Oops. Click on the whole thing and delete it and click on OK. And now I've actually changed the nature of my mask in the library. Uh, so you can take this and do a lot more construction with it to create a unique mask of your own if you want to do that. Um, but you cannot, uh, once the mask is created, it treats it as a single object. Uh, I can take it, I can, I can resize it, I can, I can do these kinds of things with it, but I can't treat the components of the mask individually, whether it's with keyframing or other things. Uh, so those are some limitations. But those are the two ways in which you can begin to build a mask using your own image. Load image and create mask. And I encourage you to do the create mask option. Again, if you want to make it go away, simply click on the blue X and you're back to normal.